Uh, this is Timmy, and I'm today I'm ready to present you my feasibility study of renewable energy adoption in Hong Kong, which is my final year of dissertation uh, of thesis. Uh, it all starts from the Paris Agreement that uh, lots of the countries commit to uh, achieve the carbon neutrality goal in 2050 or 2060. And Hong Kong government has allocated nearly 280 billion to uh, address the climate change, which uh, they launched the Hong Kong Climate Action Plan 2050 plus. And, and, and also there are lots of challenges raised by uh, different stakeholders uh, regarding the RE systems, for example, uh, how to implement by uh, limited scare, uh, or scarcity of resources in Hong Kong with high population density and Hong Kong is uh, heavily rely on the fossil fuels to generate the electricity. And these are the motivation that I would like to achieve uh, uh, or to have a study on, on the renewable energy system, uh, whether they can uh, fulfill the requirement to, to achieve the Paris Agreement uh, in Hong Kong such an area. Uh, since Hong Kong has developed several de uh, development projects, and I think this is a good opportunity to implement these uh, kind of our systems in, in over there. The the aim of the study is to evaluate the uh, feasibility of implementing RE systems in Hong Kong by analyzing the meteorological resources for RE or examine uh, uh, and examine the potential RE solutions. Uh, uh, basically, we have uh, uh, three potential sites uh, to be implemented in, in this project, which is Kudu North, uh, Kazupi Power Station, and uh, Southeastern Water with. Uh, offshore wind energy systems, and uh, the above two is the uh, PV system. And lastly, to uh, examine the electricity self-sufficiency of RE or the existence, uh, existing energy system. Uh, the content will be as follows. Uh, I will firstly talk about the background first, and uh, followed by the methodologies of the uh, report, and uh, three different uh, sites assessment and resource assessment uh, at particular uh, site. And lastly, well, we will have uh, a separate implementation result analysis. And uh, lastly, we'll have a conclusion and a, a electricity self-sufficiency evaluation. So the uh, research background is at Hong Kong, uh, which is a uh, which has a subtropical climate with a plenty of sunlight monsoons. Uh, with a uh, high average daily global solar radiation of 13.23 megajoule per meter square. It has a high, uh, is a good uh, uh, tropical cyclone winds with high uh, average wind speed of 6.6 .6 meters second per seconds, uh, uh, record at Wetland Island. The size of temperature in Hong Kong is around 1,814 uh, per uh, kilometer square including Hong Kong Island, New Territories, uh, Kelvin Peninsula, and other outlying islands. And a power plant in Hong Kong major uh, comes from CLP and Hong Kong Electric. They are responsible for different, uh, uh, different, different, uh, different district uh, or continents. Uh, Hong Kong is responsible for Hong Kong Island and Lam Island. And uh, CLP is responsible for uh, Kowloon New Territories and other outlying islands. If we need to consider the electricity self-sufficiency, firstly, we need to know the, uh, the, the weighting of RE in Hong Kong nowadays. Uh, we can see actually uh, the solar energy and wind energy only occupies for 3.6% in total of the only in the RE systems. And uh, majority are dominated by uh, biodiesel or, or waste energy. And however, if we see the, the whole uh, renewable energy systems, including all the all the renewable technologies in in the whole energy system, energy system, it only occupies for 0.9% and only 0.3% contributed to the electricity uh, expense. Since if we see the energy end use for the whole uh, entire year, uh, it occupies for around 286 uh, thousand terajoule um so uh this is why i would like to implement the solar and wind energy uh since i would like to uh since in my point of view i think uh it has a high potential and relatively easier to implement in in the rooftop or or uh wind energy can produce a massive energy uh offshore 
Uh, so let's talk about the soul energy first, uh, the, the fundamentals. Uh, it uh, basically uh, directly converts light to electricity by photoelectric uh, electric event using semiconductor materials. And nowadays, uh, we typically use uh, silicon as the semiconductor uh, materials, and uh, uh, we call it solar cell. And monocrystalline and polycrystalline are most prevalent than others. For example, amorphous silicon or microcrystalline. Since uh, these two kinds of silicon has the greatest efficiency of conversion rate, uh, around 15% to 25% rather than others. Uh, only only having six to eight percent of the efficiency. So if we need to uh, assess the sol uh, sol solar energy and to implement, we have to assess for our site assessment. We have to conduct site assessment and a resource assessment. For resource assessment, what is it? Is uh, basically to evaluate the feasibility of solar uh, energy conversion system, and uh, it involves. Uh, evaluating the characteristics of solar irradiance over a specific region or, or location over a long period of time. And in this study, uh, we do not conduct physical measurement. Instead, we will collect the data based on uh, various database or the empirical models. For example, HKO, Hong Kong Observatory from local uh, weather station, uh, computer software, a database from uh, Global Solar Atlas, PWSYS, PW Watts, and etc. This is due to uh, if we need to conduct physical measurement, professional instrument needed uh, uh, for uh, for a more accurate result. For example, paranometers, a sunshine recorder. These we will conduct in a later detail uh, detail part of the study rather than uh, in this feasibility study. Assessment parameters or considerations of PV system uh, is the most crucial part that we need to consider. Uh, what we need to measure or what we need to consider carefully. The GHI, the global horizontal irradiance is the most important aspect or the parameters need to be considered. If you see the figure, uh, it, it tells you directly, uh, the, sun, uh, the sun irradiation com comes from the direct, directly or through reflected or ground reflected. So we can explain in the uh, equation of GHI with the uh, diffuse horizontal irradiance and the direct normal irradiance. And this is the equation that we use to um, evaluate the, the solar irradiation by, uh, there are lots of models actually, and this is the, the most popular part uh, one, which is uh, to explain the, the relationship between the sun exposure hours and the uh, uh, solar irradiation. So these two are the most crucial part that we need to consider when we need to do perform a solar assessment, uh, solar resource assessment. And how can we classify the intensity of the solar radiation? It will see below 2.6 kilowatt per meter square. Uh, it classified as the low or poor abundance, moderate uh, 2.6 to 3, high 3 to 4, and very high about 4. And um, other than consider the resource assessment, uh, solar site asses selection as assess and assessment is uh, also crucial to our uh, study. And the critical concern, this is a critical concern for uh, typical system planners, developers and investors. And we need to consider, like, like I said, the GHI, the total solar energy received per unit area and shading. The shading is the most crucial part because uh, uh, um, it will affect the, affect the performance of the PV panel and, and generate uh, the relative uh, energy performance we, we, we get lower. And we need to consider the land use and proximity of vacant land. Uh, we seldom use uh, those developed land because uh, they have different land owners. It's hard to, hard to compromise for, for uh, building a utility scale uh, uh, PV farm and other environmental uh, factors could be considered, for example, temperature or wind. And if we need to evaluate it, we can use the ArcGIS Pro. Uh, in, this, in this time, I have used it for shading and area evaluation. Global Solar Atlas or uh, the solar irradiation map provided by EMSD could be used to evaluate solar irradiation a particular site. 
So let's talk about the first slide. Preliminary design of a roof grid connected uh, photovoltaic system in Kuchung North NTDA. I would like to give you a very brief background first. Why I choose Kuchung? First of all, Kuchung is uh, belongs to uh, one of the uh, the government development plan, uh, uh, Kuchung new development plan uh, at the north, northern uh, northern link uh, development area. And uh, it's actually located at the eastern uh, northeastern part of the Hong Kong New Territories region, which is next to Shenzhou. And in this study, we will only focus on Kuchung now, since it has been a mark, earmarked as the new development by, by the Hong Kong government, addressed as the city house, uh, uh, to address the city housing stock shortage and uh, to build a new CBD. Expect to be uh, 26, 27 new buildings in the development soon, including residential areas, commercial areas, and uh, public facilities. The population will be around uh, uh, 170,000 people. And we will only consider for this, these kind of uh, green belts or agriculture use, we will not consider for it. Instead, we will consider for all the roof rooftops in, in, in the uh, high rise building. Next, other than the land use or proximity use uh, consideration, we will consider the solar irradiation performance. If we look at the EMSD at, at Kuchung, it basically provides you lots of red uh, legend. If we see red legend, which is an excellent performance, which uh, exceed 1,400 kilowatt hour per meter square and at these areas, and only small areas like these are, are, uh, or buildings are showing poor irradiation with less than 800 kilowatt hour per meter square. After site survey, uh, it's figured out that uh, most of the may may get blocked from nearby trees or or the the green the green areas, uh, green belt. It's is expected to remove from uh, these kind of uh, uh, green areas or or the trees uh, when the construction begins, and it may provide a better irradiation performance. And we can see the buildings from the Kutong South does not block or effect, affect the reception of solar radiation at the desired site. Since uh, at Kutong South, most likely they are the private uh, villa and they are low rise buildings. And, uh, and, this, and hence, if you consider the sun path, the sun, uh, the sun shading will not uh, uh, cause the, uh, the sun will not cause the shading to to the north part. And shading analysis we have cons uh, we have made uh, by using ArcGIS Pro and we consider summer and winter season and we chosen uh, for uh, 21 for 21st at December since we have considered the sun path uh, which is the greatest shading at, at, at that date and If we can see, uh, the the shading started. Uh, we start from uh early six uh six a.m. to uh six p.m. Uh, at early six a.m. the sun start to rise, and uh at eight p.m. only a few shadings calls here, and nearly uh at twelve no shadings at at three no. At four thirty p.m. it start to cause a bit shading only. Uh, for example, like here like here, but it does not cause a great effect. Uh, at 6, uh, 1x00, uh, which is 6 p.m., uh, the sun start to fall and the shading uh, uh, nearly cover most of majority of them. If we consider compared to the winter uh, at age, it's still dark, dark, uh, dark scenes. And if we see uh, for uh, 440 um, compared to the previous one, you can see the um,
a large shading of course, a relatively larger shading of course, uh, uh, shading areas. At uh, before six p.m., all the all the buildings are nearly covered by uh, or, or shade by the by the sun since the sun uh, uh falls earlier in the winter time. And uh, if we consider the solar resource assessment, uh, on average, uh, this uh, the GHI nearly three point one five to four point six two uh kilowatt hour per meter square per day, and uh, it comes the highest occurring at the August. The solar irradiation are classified as highly abundant in solar resources, as we see the table before it, which lies between four three to four kilowatt per meter square. Hour per meter square, and a particular season in in Hong Kong, uh, which is beyond four kilowatt hour per meter square, and classified could be classified as very high solar irradiation. Moreover, if we consider in season variation uh, of global solar radiation, uh, summer has the highest, while winter has the lowest. Uh, the difference is around a hundred something kilowatt hour per meter square. The solar resource assessment, uh, as we mentioned, other than solar irradiation, we also consider for the sun exposure hours. The sun exposure hours uh, at monthly uh, uh, calc uh, estimation is around 154 hours with 21.1% uh, sun exposure hours. And these, as we found, uh, the trend line uh, provides a co positive correlation with the uh, global solar uh, radiation and uh, highest sun exposure hour and the maximum irradiation was both recorded at 2021 at 2,179 hours with uh, 150, 1561 uh, kilowatt hour per meter square, while the lowest is caused at uh, 2012, as you can see, lowest. And this is from other database, which is uh, 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 measured particularly at Kutung North, we can see the, the range uh, around 3.88 to 4.0 something. If we see 4.4 something or 4.5 something, these could be neglected uh, uh, since it's out of range. And we can see the optimal optimized tilt irradiation could up to 4.13 or 4.21. And the optimum tilt angle is 20, 20 to uh, 19 to 23 uh, towards south. So um, this is the implementation uh, result at Kutum North. And I have uh, merged 26 turn seven buildings into a single system that can be considered. Since if you need to consider the individual system is quite hard to, uh, hard to consider. And a total of three, 36,524 kilowatt will be evaluated by using system advisor model. This is the monthly report, and we can see the annual AC output uh, reached 41.96 gigawatt hours and uh, 1.2 AC to DC ratio, energy yield call uh, up to 1,144.88 uh, kilowatt hour per kilowatt. The performance ratio is 80 point something, which is good. And according to the EMSD, if we consider only for residential use, and these rooftop could be catered a total of 12,700 something households. The second one, uh, photovoltaic system at, at CPPS. Uh, CPPS originally is used for coal-fired power station. Uh, right now it, it still is, but the government has decided to shut down it uh, uh, for the coal power, power plant which means these two cold storage must not be, uh, will not be used furthermore, but it occupies for large areas, uh, scale of areas. And furthermore, if we consider the solar irradiation uh, nearby, it performs uh, pre pretty well if we see the legend, it's uh, around good to excellent, uh, as you can see here. And we can estimate the area by GIS, uh, and we can see, uh, nearly 30,000, uh, 130,000, 130,000 meters square. And shading analysis are, are conducted 
uh, by similar approach to uh, to that of uh, Kutunov, we can see uh, basically they are not getting effect by nearby buildings, but um, at six, uh, at seven, when time uh, when a sun falls, it causes a large shading. But at six, it still perform pretty well. Uh, when we consider the winter analysis, since the sun will uh, drop er uh, falls earlier, which means uh, at 5.30 uh, p.m., it already caused a large shading here by the sun. And if we implement it into the um, SAM to be considered uh, by separate cold storage to, to perform an analysis, and we can see the total energy AC output could reach 191.33 gigawatt hour by combining these two storage to be considered. And each of them are having a similar performance ratio, uh, energy yield, and uh, one of them having 104 gigawatt hour, while another one uh, having 86, some, 86 gigawatt hour. And this is the monthly system power generated. And last but not least, the, the offshore wind farm. When we decide to uh, uh, make a wind farm, we need to firstly uh, think about the wind speed. At the wind speed, by using GIS, we can indicate that uh, at, at the uh, blue region, they are having the most abundant uh, uh, wind speed or wind velocity. While at land hill, land or hill, uh, or or coast area, um, it only got three to three point something or four meters square, which interprets when we consider at offshore it getting high wind power density, rather than only fourteen at, at this coast area. Wind resources assessment. We need to consider several parameters like wind speed, direction power density, temperature, and sea level pressure. These parameters are, are used uh, in later part of the simulation. And lastly, we will use the wave bow, y bow distribution developed with the occurrence of wind speed data rather than using normal distribution since it can left scale or, or, or right scale and provide a better accuracy. And these are the calculations we, we, we use to calculate by integration to, to calculate the wind power density and the standard deviation and uh, C and K shape parameters and scale parameters are used for the y bar distribution. And uh, to classify it, uh, you should be on free, plus, uh, class free. It can use for massive deployment for of a wind, uh, wind farm and F4, it, can uh, reach a utility, it can make a utility scale uh, uh, wind power applications. It's more preferred for, for a class four above. And at this time, we have chosen uh, Southeastern Water, which is uh, nearby Nineteen Islands and uh, Vasa Island, and uh, with 2.2 to 3.2 kilometers away, and 5.5 kilometers away from Clearwater Bay. And uh, this site has actually been considered by CLP Power and a preliminary profile conducted in uh, April 2026. Uh, and if we see the resources, and uh, for example, the green rows uh, provided by the Plan D, uh, the the occurrence of uh northeast is the highest for three 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 point six percent, and uh more uh it's more abundant than in east and southeast. And after we consider all the results, and we found that the annual wind speed uh, on average on six point nine eight five meter per second, uh annually. And the any wind power density could reach 207.6 per uh, watt per meter square, which is classified as class four, which is strong, strongly recommend or preferred. And this is a wind speed frequency distribution with highest at uh, six to nine, followed by three to six. 
this is the Y bar distribution. You can see uh, six is the highest, followed by seven to five, five to seven. And this is the data from Hong Kong Observatory uh, with uh, uh, record at Wetland, Wetland Island. And uh, it has higher wind power density, but uh, compared to those uh, record in coast area, is the most uh, similar uh, or, or to be referenced. Most uh, clo closest are data to be considered. And uh, when we implement it to the SAM, with using Vestas V112 uh, with three megawatt output, we would like to consider uh, a 150 megawatt wind farm at southeastern water with a uh, preliminary model with the data collect at Wetland Island. Um, we see the um, is expected to generate generate 4.8. Uh, 9 8 to the power uh, uh, times 8 10 to the power 8, uh, which is uh, nearly 1792.8 terajoule, which is um, uh, AC electricity in year one, uh, which could provide and the capacity factor you can see is 37.9%. The capacity is 150 megawatts and uh, from from the point of view of monthly reports, December provided the greatest, and since the the wind is the most abundant at, at the winter time, and the least will be expect at uh, April, and if we consider only for residential use, it can cater one point eight one million household, but in capita per capita of of electricity. Um, including commercial use or, or other industrial use, it could be expected to serve 83,000 people throughout the year. Our is expect to help increasing the weight. Uh, this energy system is expect to uh, increase the weighting of RE to the whole system from 0.9 to 1.4%. Still, the increment is not obvious and hard to rely on the renewable energy. And also for solar, uh, it actually uh, 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 provide small energy yield compared, much smaller energy yield to, to that of uh, wind power, wind energy. So it does not have a great contribution to, to, the, to the whole electricity uh, output. However, we could, achieve for a Hong Kong climate action plan that uh, they suggest to uh, increase the weighting of RE from 1% right now to 7.5%. And uh, in conclusion, this is not a, uh, this is a feasibility study, of course, we need to promote for the self sufficient uh, uh self sufficiency by renewables. However, these three sites could not contribute a massive uh massive generation or or a massive uh effect on the whole power system. Still, we need to find another way. For example, uh, considering more ways to energy, or consider more and more place to to pl place these kind of rooftop PV panels to make an effect on the renewable energy systems.